Hi everyone. Today I'd like to talk about the kinematic equations. Kinematic equations are going to allow us to solve problems for objects moving in a straight line at constant acceleration. Where this comes into play is it's not always efficient or effective to use graphs to analyze all different types of motion. Sometimes that can get tedious, other times maybe it's not quite as accurate as you want it to be. Other times, um, well, you just want more detailed information. So, the kinematic equations are kind of like our toolbox for solving motion problems in physics. We're giving you more tools to allow you to solve more types of problems more efficiently. We're going to deal with five variables that are going to describe the motion of an object moving in a straight line at constant acceleration. Initial velocity, vi. Final velocity, vf. Displacement, d. Acceleration, a and t for the time elapsed. Now, the kinematic equations are three equations that relate these variables. We start off with number one, vf equals vi plus at. Final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Our second one, displacement, d equals vi t, initial velocity times time, plus one half times acceleration times the square of the time. And finally, the square of the final velocity is equal to the square of the initial velocity plus 2 times your acceleration times your displacement. Where these come into play is if you solve problems the same way every time in physics, you should be pretty effective. And really the key to solving these types of problems is taking your time and setting it up correctly. The actual problem solving in algebra is pretty straightforward. Taking the time to set up your problem is where you really get into the level of success. So our problem solving steps. First off, we're going to decide if we're talking about horizontal or sideways motion or vertical motion. And for now, we're only going to deal with one of those at a time. Later on, when we deal with projectile motion, things that go up and down, those have aspects of vertical and horizontal motion. We're going to use the same tools for those later on. But for now, let's stick with just horizontal or just vertical. Next, we'll choose a direction to cause positive, to call positive. And we can pick any direction we want to be positive and the, other, the opposite to be negative. But if we want to make life easy and be consistent, let's always choose the direction an object moves initially and call that its positive direction. Next, we'll create a motion analysis table. That means we're going to make a table of VI, VF, D, A, and T. And then using what we know from the problem, we're going to fill in as much of that table as we can. Once we know any three things in that table, we can always solve for the other two using our kinematic equations. Let's give it a shot and see how this works in practice. For example, here we have a race car starting from rest and it accelerates uniformly at a rate of 4.9 meters per second squared. What is the car's speed after it has traveled 200 meters? Well, our first step is to determine if this is a horizontal or vertical motion problem. Of course it's horizontal, so let's just label that as we make our table. We'll say it's a horizontal problem and we'll call to the right the positive direction. We'll assume the car is moving to the right just to make life simple. Next up, we make our table. VI, VF, D, A, and T. And it says the car starts from rest. If it starts from rest, its initial velocity must be zero. It accelerates at 4.9 meters per second squared. So A must be 4.9 meters per second squared. We're asked, what is the car's speed? That's final velocity, so that's what we're trying to find. After it has traveled 200 meters, that must be our displacement. So we know VI, VF, D, and A. We don't know T. It doesn't tell us anything about it. But it tells us three items that we do know. Once we know those three, we can always solve for the other two. Now, we're looking for VF. So if we want VF, we need to choose one of those kinematic equations that has most of what we're after and most of the information. So the equation that will fit best here, VI, VF, D, and A, we have a kinematic equation that has just those four things in it. It is VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. And we always start off by writing down our formula first. Next we'll try and solve for the variable we're after. 
Since that is VF, we're all set. Our next step then is to substitute in our givens with units. So VF squared equals VI squared. VI is 0, so that's 0 squared plus 2 times A, 4.9 meters per second squared, times D, 200 meters. Now, pulling out our calculators, VF squared equals 1960 meters squared per second squared. And I don't want VF squared, I want VF. So if I take the square root of both sides, I find that VF equals, and it's actually plus or minus, since it's a square root, but we'll use the positive here because that's the one that's going to make sense. VF equals 44.3 meters per second. And I put a box around my final answer. We, <coughs> excuse me. We found the final velocity of our car. Let's try another one, but now let's look in the vertical direction. Here we have an astronaut standing on a platform on the moon, and he drops a hammer. If the hammer falls 6 meters vertically in 2.7 seconds, what is its acceleration? Well, right away, we know this is a vertical problem. And our next step is to figure out which direction we want to call positive. Because the hammer starts from rest and then it's dropped, its initial direction of motion is going to be down. So we'll call down the positive direction. Now we can make our motion table, but our motion table only applies to vertical motion. VI, VF, D, A, T. Since he's dropping a hammer, VI equals 0. The hammer falls 6 meters vertically, there's our displacement, in 2.7 seconds. We're asked to find its acceleration. It doesn't tell us anything about final velocity. So we know three things in this problem again. We know VI, we know D, and we know T. We're looking for A. So we need to find an equation that has most of those things in there. Well, the equation that'll work best here, D equals VIT plus 1 half AT squared. It has our unknowns in there, and we know every other variable. So we can solve for that unknown A. My first step is if I look at this carefully, I see that VI equals 0. So over here, VI, 0 times T is still going to be 0, so I can rewrite this right away as, oops, excuse me, can write this right away as D equals 1 half AT squared, since that whole term becomes 0. Now I can substitute in with units, D equals 1 half, oops, I skipped a step. I need to solve for A first. Get A all by itself. A is going to be equal to 2D over. Now I can substitute in with units since I have the variable I'm solving for all by itself. 2 times 6 meters over T squared is going to be 2.7 seconds squared. Plug that into my calculator and I should come out with something right around 1.6 meters per second squared for my acceleration. The acceleration due to gravity near the surface of the Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. I know the acceleration due to gravity near the surface of the Moon is about one-sixth of that. 1 1.6 is roughly one-sixth of 9.8. Therefore, this is probably a pretty reasonable answer. There's less acceleration due to gravity on the Moon. Very good. There's our vertical problem. Let's try one more and throw another uh, trick into the problem, another little challenge. For our last problem, we'll start with the car traveling on a straight road again, but we have a little bit different story. It's traveling on a straight road, so that's a horizontal problem. We'll say it's traveling to the right, so we'll call that the positive direction. And now as we look at the problem, VI, VF, D, A, T, it tells us it starts at 15 meters per second. It accelerates to 21 meters per second. And it takes it 12 seconds to do that. We want to find the total distance traveled in this period of time. And it doesn't tell us anything about acceleration. So we know VI, VF, T, and we're looking for D. 
Now, the trick here is we don't have any equations that have just vi, vf, d, and t in it. Well, what do we do? Why don't we solve for a first, then we can go solve for our displacement. So, to solve for a first, we've got vi, vf, and t. Let's use vf equals vi plus at. Now, we'll solve for the acceleration. A equals VF minus VI over T. We substitute in with units. A equals 21 meters per second minus 15 meters per second all over 12 seconds. That's going to be 0 0.5 meters per second squared. So A is no longer unknown. It's 0 0.5 meters per second squared. Now we can solve for d with any of the equations we want to use. Let's use d equals vit plus 1 half at squared. Substitute in with units. vi is 15 meters per second. t is 12 seconds. Plus 1 half times 0 0.5 meters per second squared times t squared, 12 seconds squared. And when I do all that, plug it into my calculator, I come out with an answer of 216 meters for our displacement. So three problems all using the same basic strategy and application of our kinematic equations. For your next steps, I'd like you to try creating your own horizontal motion problem. Decorate it, try and make it creative. Give the, prob give the user who's going to solve it three of those five pieces of information and see if they can solve for one of the other two. Then, on the back of that sheet, solve it yourself using this methodology we've talked about, showing your formula, your substitution with units, and your answer with units. Then, try this whole procedure again. Try and make your own vertical motion problem. See if you can solve it. And of course, if you have questions or need more samples, a little bit more work on it, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks.